Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom. Today, we're going to be talking about loops. So this is going to be a intro number 15 video. I see uh, loops seem to kind of confuse people a lot of times. Uh, I know they're pretty basic uh, stuff. Uh, so hopefully this helps out some people. And we're just going to play with uh, kind of different ideas with what we can use with a loop that I see most commonly asked. Definitely hit that subscribe button as we are throwing out videos once or twice a week. And uh, we're definitely taking requests. So if you guys have any ideas, hit those comments up below, up below, down below. That's what I meant to say. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and actually run the script. Nope, oh, I already have it running. That works. Um, just to point out real quick, um, at the end of my script, I did add F6 hotkey to exit out. This is really good to do, especially if you're kind of new to loops or you're doing some, you know, super advanced thing with the loop. Uh, I've had it once where I've actually made a mistake in the loop and it had no way to break and it was just took over my computer. There was nothing I could do. I actually had to pull the plug on my computer and restart it because I lost control. So it's always good to maybe put something in here like this, at least when you're uh, first testing out your script, just in case something goes wrong. So I'll be using that a few times here, just in some of my loops that do not break, and you'll see why. So the first one is very basic. I'm using F1 as my hotkey. So when I press the F1 key, it's going to do all this stuff until it hits the return. And we're just doing a very basic loop here. It's just a loop. And it's just going to say message box hi. There's no break. There's no count in this. Nothing. No if statement. So this loop will go forever until I hit that F6 key to break it. Or right click on the icon on your tray menu and close it out that way. If you can do that. If you're using like sins, you might have some problems there. So definitely use that exit app at the end. So let's go ahead and do that. F1. So I got that little message box that just says hi. I'm going to push OK. And... Just gonna keep pushing OK. I push enter on my keyboard. As you see, it's never gonna end. It's just gonna keep going. So in a case like this, I'm definitely gonna use that F6 right now. And there it goes. Let me relaunch that. Now let's move on to a counting loop. So it's basically the same thing as we have up here. Uh, the only difference is I put a number after a space of the loop which is a five, that just means that it's going to loop five times and then it's automatically going to break and move on to this message box that just says all done. So let's try that one out. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and now all done. So that just goes through five times, does whatever you want. Obviously, you're probably not going to be using message boxes. You're probably going to be using like sins if you're using a video game. We're just repeating a task over and over a certain amount of times at your job uh, that you want to have completed. Yeah, pretty simple there. And because that one actually did break, I don't have to use that F6 because everything's all good. Let's take a look at F3 hotkey here. This one we're going to do um, kind of a little bit of a different count. Instead of doing the loop 5 here, it's just kind of a different way to do it. Um, I mean, just using a variable count, uh, so plus plus at the end of the name of your variable. And that basically just starts at zero by default. One, two, three, four, five. If variable equals five, I mean, it's already looped past this line five times. And show this message box five times. You can also use a index too. It does basically the same thing. Uh, I, I don't know why. I'm just so used to using this kind of method. Uh, so I kind of like that because then I'm a little bit more in control of when it's counting. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So once it hits variable five, uh, we're gonna do a go sub. This is a great way if you want. I've seen this used a lot in video games, especially when someone wants to repeat a task over and over, but every so often do something else real quick and then snap back to the loop. So go sub is just gonna jump down to whatever I named it. So sub thing crazy there i'm really bad at my variable names and handler names here um it's going to jump down your here real quick i'm going to have a display message box i went sub and then once this is complete it hits that return it's going to snap right back up to here and continue 
which with me continuing on here, it's just a break. And a break is basically like exit the loop, be done with it, however you want to, you know, define it. And it's going to, so it's going to exit the loop, which uh, you see is right here. And we're going to have a message box that just says all done. And what was that? F3? One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to go sub, which is going to be, I went sub. There we go. I went sub. It's going to jump back up here, break. And our next one is all done. And that is complete. So just uh, a few things there that you can play around with, depending on what you want to do. I know a lot of people use this for gaming to make uh, purposely make mistakes every so often. Um, so that's a good way to do it. You could also, if you wanted to, you don't even have to have it go sub. You could just put this message box up here in place of that if you wanted to. So it's whatever you want to do. But I wanted to show you guys go sub in this too, because it can be very helpful in loops especially. Especially if you're going to use this uh, in multiple different parts of your script, you can use it as basically like a block function. All right. F4. What are we doing here? Okay. Okay. Um, this one I did go ahead and use a index. Um, so when it equals three, it's going to do a continue. Now a continue, I know when I first started using auto hotkeys, I kind of always thought a continue was kind of like a go sub or like just like keep going in the loop. Actually, you know, pretty quickly when I tried to use this for the first time, I realized that I kind of had the wrong idea there. A continue actually basically means start the loop over. Ignore anything that's under it and just start back at the beginning and then continue uh this could be used for a lot of things it could be used for like error handling like if something goes wrong you can basically kind of reset the loop to try again um, in case something had gone wrong there's a lot of uses so basically we're gonna loop we're gonna get that message box hi uh we're gonna get that we're all we're also gonna get yo so it's gonna go like hi yo hi yo hi yo and on the third hit when a index equals three it's gonna go to continue which means it's going to jump back here. So instead of going to high yo, it's going to go high, high, and then yo. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> All right, let's try that one out. F4. So we got high, yo, high, yo, high, high, yo. And it's just going to keep going on because I don't have a break or anything in this. So that's just a way to kind of start the loop over if there's some reason you need to do that. So since that one has no break, I'm going to use F6 and relaunch that script again. This is why that F6 uh, exit app thing is very helpful. Especially in these things where I'm purposely trying to make uh, loops that don't quite work right, just so you can see uh, the mistakes that could possibly be made. Now this isn't really a loop, but I'm going to include it in this video just because it, it kind of acts like a loop but you're in control with holding a key down i see this kind of associated with loops a lot um, so it, it kind of works like a loop in a way um, but first thing i'm doing is this is just a setting um you you should probably use this depending on what you're doing but it's uh just setting it's, it's looking at my entire screen to get the mouse coordinates so it's going to get mouse position basically the x and y coordinates of where my mouse is located it's then going to check if the F key or the F5 key is still being held down. So while get key state F5, meaning it's being currently pressed, it's going to get the position X and Y, and it's going to display a tooltip, which is just a little tiny window of information that follows your mouse around. And it's just going to sleep for uh, 10 milliseconds, and it's just going to keep doing that as long as I'm holding F5 down. Uh, once I uh, let go of F5, it's going to jump down here to tooltip. And when tooltips by itself, it basically means just destroy that little window. We don't want to see it anymore. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hold F5 down. And as you see, as I move, it keeps updating the coordinates because it keeps hitting this little get mouse position here and display tooltip every 10 milliseconds. It's pretty smooth, actually, for only being 10 milliseconds of a constant update. There's no flashing here, which sometimes can happen, uh, depending. And then I'm going to let F5 go now. And there we go. We jump down the tooltip, and the tooltip disappeared. So, yeah. 
This is basically just a uh, quick intro to some of the very basic ways of using uh, loops, things that can be associated within a loop that could help you out. If there's anything I missed that you can think of, definitely let me know in the comments below. That way it helps other people out also, just in case there's something I forgot. And I will see you guys all on the next video. Have a great day. Thank you.